Hi, I'm Danny Staten. I'm a potter and I'm your neighbour. I've been in this studio for like 22 years maybe. What I do now, I can do a vase. Once again, you centre the clay. Put your thumbs in. You'd be amazed, you make a pot, okay. It's got so many processes to go through now before it comes out the other end and it's got to be perfect. And lots of things can happen on this journey. I'm going to bring a belly out now. Basically, I just throw the pots, put them on the boards, put them on the shelves, and then got to watch them. I like to turn them over before I leave so I can get the bottoms dry. Otherwise, you come in and the bottoms are wet and the tops are dry. That's a real problem, because then you can't trim them up. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take the neck in. Make sure the rim's always in check. Squeeze the neck up. So you make the pot, trim it, put a handle on, and then dry it and bisfire it. And then you've got to glaze it then. I like a lot of texture in my work. So I use um, textured glazes. I make textured surfaces, bodies. Uh, what's called separating glazes. And little bits of glaze are just bead up into little beads as they're being fired and drying. Unfortunately, when it does pull away, Sometimes it pulls away too much and falls on the kiln shelf and you end up opening the kiln and there's bit patches missing everywhere, so very tricky glaze, but I love it, I can't help it. Here is a, an incredible sample of this glaze that came out once. This is back in the 90s, this one came out. As you can see, the beads are huge on this one for this particular glaze. This is one of my favourites and uh, I kept that one. One of those pieces I keep, this is one of them. Well, I grew up in a small village in Cumbria, North England. I met uh, Peter Little, who was uh, my teacher, and he's the one who really influenced me to continue art. I wanted to do portraits and all kinds of other stuff and landscapes. And for two years, I did that. And for one day, just one day a, a week, it was compulsory to do the pottery course. I absolutely hated it. I couldn't stand going there, you know, it was absolutely awful. And then I got on the wheel, Potter's wheel, and I liked that a bit better, but I was still focused on painting. It came to the end of my painting course, and I didn't have enough qualifications to get onto the next course. I thought, all right, I've got to go on the pottery course, I guess. <laughs> so I went on the pottery course for another two years. And uh, the thing with the pottery course is I was third best in the class. That's pretty impressive. But I tried to put to the back of my mind there was only three people in the class. I uh, went to London and I went in the potter shop down there. There's a big potter shop in there. Saw the magazine uh, Ceramics Monthly from America. So I just looked in there and I saw a job advertised. I just thought I'd just give it a, give it a go. And apparently these people, uh, they liked what I saw and asked me to come over for an interview. I flew over to Pennsylvania. It was just exciting for me because I'd never been to America before and it was like so different. Everything was so different. I worked there for like, since 1992 till 2000. And then I worked on my own, uh, doing festivals. But I do one show now, and that's the Central Pennsylvania Festival of the Arts. It's the only what show I do. It's a nice big festival. Being local, that makes it worthwhile to me. You know? Well, it's my life. I've been doing it 40 years. I just love pots. Support for this program comes from the members of WPSU and from the Blake and Linda Gall Endowment for WPSU Penn State.